What is up here? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton and the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode, we started our adventure and got to know uh, Luke and, of course, the great Professor Layton, and we're introduced to the town of St. Mystere. And it seems upon loading our, uh, our file, we have this nice little story so far clip. A letter requesting help brings Professor Layton and his assistant Luke to the remote St. Mystere. After solving a puzzle, the pair are able to cross the drawbridge that leads into the village. Now Luke and Leighton must go to Reinhold Manor, residence of Lady Dahlia, the author of the letter. And so we were on our way there, and I think we had done a pretty good job of uh, progressing. We were about to cross this river, I believe. So, um, cool, we found a hint coin. And I will note that I'm actually, I've been so eager to play more of this. Uh, I'm recording the second episode before I've seen the reactions to the very first one. Um, so if there were suggestions, it seems I'm not heeding. I apologize in advance. Um, I literally have not seen them yet. And I've just been enjoying the game that much. So hopefully that passion counts for something. Is this the manor, Professor? Wow. That's a mighty impressive manor. It's positively gigantic. Just look at the size of it. It certainly seems like we've come to the right place. Reinhold Manor awaits. Make your way to the Reinhold Manor. Chapter solved. Oh, all right, I guess chapter was short enough, but you know, that's fine. The professor and Luke finally arrive at Reinhold Manor. Let's head in, shall we? Yes, sir. Uh-oh, it seems the front door is locked. We must solve this puzzle in order to make it through. I'm, I'm sure is something on the horizon. The garden's big, but there's not much to look at here. Okay, well then I guess, I guess we'll head in, right? Ooh, and who might you be? Matthew, welcome to Reinhold Manor. Thank you for coming. I am Matthew, butler and servant to the Reinhold family. Everyone is waiting upstairs for you. Ah, but before you go, I have a message from Lady Dahlia. She has requested that you take a look at this puzzle. Please do not be taken aback. But I was the strangest sense of propriety, it's, or sometimes. All right, so I guess, just for the sake of it, we have a, a puzzle to solve. So to move a match, hold it by its center and drag it. Okay. So rotate a match, touch one of its ends and drag it. Fair enough. Let's go to the puzzle. Puzzle number nine. Did we miss eight? Hmm. 35 pig rats. Okay. The matches below are arranged in the shape of a dog. This poor little guy was just minding his own business when a car came barreling down the road and ran him over. Move two matches to change the picture so that it shows the dog after the accident. All puzzles are a matter of perspective, so don't assume that you'll be looking at the dog from the side by the time you're finished with this one. Gotcha. I think this one is pretty straightforward, honestly. Um, but what I'm more concerned about is, did I find puzzle eight? Actually, this is a good question. Is it possible to completely miss puzzles? As in, I will have no chance of being able to return and try them. Because if so, that would be very upsetting. So what we will do is then rotate this guy to look like that. I think the, the the what they're aiming for here is to have something look like a splat, right? So kind of like a bird's eye perspective. I'm just trying to rotate it, but okay, I guess that works. And then we'll move this guy up here as well. And we can rotate you accordingly. And yeah, we'll move you over a little bit. Something like that. And yeah, that way we're looking down from a bird's eye view and it's splat out like that. So we'll give that a go and see how it works. That should do it. It's 35 picarets. Huh. All right. Critical thinking is the key to success. Critical thinking is the key to success. The car flattened the poor dog. Let this be a lesson to be aware of your surroundings when driving. Aw, poor pupper. That's absolutely correct. My commendations. Commendations? Commendations, sir. Again, I do apologize for the strangeness of the request. Now, please walk this way. We mustn't keep Lady Dahlia and company waiting. One poor pooch. Aw. <laughs> I'm curious. I want to check to see if I puzzle eight or not. We go into the briefcase, right? Puzzle index. Okay, yeah. So we did end up skipping number eight. So it must have been somewhere in the city. Hmm. Well... We'll look for it another time, I guess, right? 
Anything of interest in here? I guess so. Bookshelves seem to line every wall of this estate. The Baron must have been quite the avid reader. It's important to keep your mind sharp, Luke, so why don't you give this puzzle a go? <laughs> there must have been something in the environment I missed. Okay, puzzle number 10. Alphabet. Okay. Alright, here's a quick and easy one. The first letter of the alphabet is A, and the letter B comes after the letter A. However, the letter you need to worry about is the last one. What's the last letter of the alphabet? Here's a hint. It isn't... Z. Wait a second. <laughs> There's gotta be something I'm missing out here. The first letter of the alphabet is A, and the letter B comes after the letter A. However, the letter you need to worry about is the last one. What's the last letter of the alphabet? Here's a hint, it isn't Z. So, if you ask me, the, the terminology being used here makes me think they're talking about specifically the phrase, the alphabet, not referring to the actual set of 26 letters that we know as the alphabet, right? A, B, C, D, E, etc. But if you look at the phrase, the alphabet, it ends in the letter T. And the letter B does come after the letter A. Not immediately after, but it does come after. So that would be my best guess. Is there anything else I can maybe glean from this clue? The first letter of the alphabet is A. And the letter B comes after the letter A. However, the letter you need to worry about is the last one. What's the last letter of the alphabet? Hmm. Although, if it were referring to the phrase, the alphabet, it would start with T as well. Does it have something to do with this picture? I doubt it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would say T in this case. Is there anything else I could interpret? The first letter of the alphabet is A, and the letter B comes after the letter A. I mean, that's still true in the phrase alphabet, or in the word alphabet. However, the letter you need to worry about is the last one. What's the last letter of the alphabet? Is there any other way to interpret the word letter? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with T on this one. That's... It's not how I wanted that to look. Um, do we have to do this all in one stroke? Yeah. I would, yeah, I mean, I would say T in this case, because I think they're talking about specifically the phrase alphabet, or the alphabet. Hmm. I can't think of anything else, so I guess we'll see if this is it. I think I've got it. All right, I guess that was it. <laughs> It's it's interesting because I know the picarats are on the line. I don't want to, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to get it wrong and then lose out on that potential. Good job. The last letter in the word alphabet is the letter T. Okay, so that is the case. How did you like the puzzle, Luke? I hope it has prepared you for tackling more difficult puzzles. Cool. So we have that one now. Now, question: Is there an option to go back? Oh wait, or is there another puzzle here too? They're just puzzles in every room. Professor, look at these paintings on the wall here. Whoa, is that the Baron? He's a big guy. It's a very nice portrait, isn't it? I bet that's the late Baron Reinhold pictured here. But what about this one, Professor? Who could this pretty girl be? His daughter, maybe? The two portraits are next to each other, so they're likely family. She's probably the Baron's daughter. And that's exactly right, sir. You are looking at a portrait of Flora, the late Baron's daughter. Pardon me for asking, but I couldn't help but notice your keen interest in art. Would you care to take this old frame with you? It used to hold the most wonderful painting. However, now all that's left of it is this small scrap. You found a painting scrap. Scrap, huh. 
interesting. Why would... Why would this be all that's left behind? Why would it be taken in the first place, right? The painting option has been added to the trunk. You can assemble the fragments of the old painting here. To access the painting, touch the trunk to open it, then tap the painting icon. Interesting, so over the course of the game, this is going to be something we're constructing as we find multiple pieces of the painting. Ooh, that's that's exciting. I, ho I hope we find them all. I'm very much a completionist, so I will definitely want to try to, but I'm not the person to resort to a guide for that sort of thing. So this is a piece of that old painting, then. How interesting. Okay. Anything else of interest? What about, like, down here? There are stairs there? How about this set of, uh, lights? The chandelier casts a lovely warm glow. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can actually leave the manor right now and see if there's any other puzzle along the way. I believe... Right? Like, I want to take a look at the puzzle collection, or the puzzle index, and see, because seven was the one with the wolves and chicks, right? So, I mean, I would, I would imagine they have the puzzles progress accordingly, right? Let's head back one step. Is there any other, any other puzzle here? Hmm. I'm not seeing it. In the sky, maybe? Yeah, I don't, I'm not... I don't see it here. So, we'll progress. And I mean, if it's not coming up very easily, we won't... We won't take too much time away from, you know, the actual gameplay. Anything up there? Oh, hint coin. Alright, well, I guess for the time being we'll head in then, and hope for the best. I guess we'll just have to come back to it another time. Can we chat with you again? Do you have anything new to offer? Please make your way to the second floor. Straight to the point. Alright, then head to the second floor we will. What awaits us? Are we finally going to meet Lady Dahlia? <sighs> Who are you? Oh? Huh? <laughs> that smirk, though. Oh, you must be Professor Layton, I presume. It's an honor to make your acquaintance. Oh, no. The pleasure's all mine. Hmm? Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Come back, sweetie! And there goes Claudia. <laughs> and here's Lady Dahlia. We finally meet her. And who is that, that smirk, that guy with the smirk? It seems like he might be like another detective of sorts. Honestly, why am I constantly surrounded by incompetence? This is a disaster. Whatever is the matter? Oh, this is simply terrible. <laughs> How uh, melodramatic. My dear sweet baby, my Claudia. Your Claudia? Sweet, sweet Claudia, my little honeykins, my smoochie pie, my baby. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew! I love all of these names we- you know, all the names we have for our pets, right? Um, real quick. What? I didn't really plan on clicking on him, but you know, that's okay. You're Professor Layton, yes? My name is Gordon. I'm among those who requested your services. <laughs> I love his outfit. It kind of reminds me of a mermaid man. <laughs> I'd like to explain our situation further, but right now it's probably best to do as Lady Dahlia says. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I was looking around the room for hint coins or whatever it may be. Alright, well, we'll chat with Matthew for the time being then, because whoever that other person is, we probably wouldn't have the chance to really even interact with much anyways. Madame, wh what is it? What in the world happened? My little Claudia got scared and ran off. Didn't you see her dart out of the room? I, I must have missed her. I'm terribly sorry, Madame. Madame, or Madam. Oh, you're just useless, aren't you? Professor, you didn't see which my way my baby ran off to, did you? Your baby, Madam? You're referring to that white cat. I saw it run out that door a moment ago. What? And you simply stood there and let her escape? Well, she is a cat. They are animals, after all, and animals must run about from time to time. You fool! She is not just a cat. She has a name, and that name is Claudia Reinhold. <laughs> oh, Professor Layton. With, uh, with your intelligence and with your, I don't know, reputation that precedes you, Especially in the presence of people who that hold themselves very highly, you must be very careful about how you correct people. 
She's a delicate flower, and she is simply a mess when I'm not close by to comfort her. Matthew, I need you to find Claudia and bring her back immediately. I can, we're already learning so much about Dahlia's personality. About this little inheritance problem of yours, Lady Dahlia. Not can wait, can't you see that we have a more pressing concern on our hands at the moment? You could have stopped her and you didn't, so you have a responsibility to find Claudia and bring her back. I don't know if that's exactly how it works, but... <laughs> Send the pressure off to find a silly cat. The nerve, who do you think you are? <laughs> oh, it's fine, Luke. Besides, Lady Dahlia does have a point. It does seem we let Claudia run off. Though, it's not safe to say that there was an expectation that, you know, the cat wouldn't do well just running around. Madame, or madam, if you'll excuse us, we have a cat to track down. Thank you, and please hurry. My Claudia is such a delicate flower, even the coarse outdoor air might prove too much for her. <laughs> of course, noise at the manor was added to your list of mysteries. That's the whatever spooked her in the first place. It's very odd. Chapter 2, The Fugitive Feline. Lady Dolly's cat has escaped. Search St. Mystere for the runaway feline. Oh, all of St. Mystere, not even just the house. Okay. Well, we'll save our progress. I'm naturally in a different save file because, well, this is a YouTube Let's Play and that's just part of the nature of doing such a playthrough. Who are you? Simon. My name's Simon. I'm Baron Reinhold's nephew. My father is the little brother of Gordon there. Or rather, he was until he kicked the bucket, as they say. Yikes. But I digress. So you're the famous Professor Layton. This guy seems so snobby. Hmm. I thought you'd have more presents. Well, never mind that. I take it you won't mind if I throw a puzzle your way? It shouldn't prove difficult for a man of your ability. Yes, if you're as good as they say, this shouldn't amount to much more than a distraction. Look at that smirk! Why'd that work? I, I don't like this guy at all. I'm sure he's meant to be that unlikable. Arc and line. Okay. As shown in the diagram below, you have one-fourth of a circle. Is this a math problem? Awesome. Within this circle is rectangle ABCD, which touches the edge of the circle at point D. <clears throat> Assuming that point B is located at the center of the circle, how long is diagonal line AC? Gotcha. So we take a look, and it should just be 10 inches, right? This is a radius. And so then BD would also be a radius in one of the diagonals of the rectangle, which would be congruent to AC, another diagonal of the rectangle. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm fairly confident it's 10. And we'll go with that. Tis a mere distraction, Simon. I'm gonna wipe that smirk off your face. <laughs> another puzzle solved. I wonder how many pick rats we're gonna have by the end of the game. Crazy. So, righto, diagonal line AC is the exact same length as diagonal line BD. BD is the same length as the radius of the circle, so once you figure that out, the only thing left to do is add five and five, exactly. Ho ho, it appears that you're the real deal, Professor. I apologize for doubting you there. It seems you've quite the mind for puzzles. But oh ho ho, how unfortunate that you must waste your time on one of these ridiculous cat chases. They happen all the time, yet every time that cat slips out, Lady Dahlia causes the biggest fuss. Don't even bother trying to talk her down. The best thing you can do is just go and find that cat. If you're as bright as they say, you should have no trouble tracking down one little cat, right? Oh my goodness, this Simon constantly putting us under pressure, constantly doubting us, constant, constantly trying to make us prove how, I don't know, how bright we are. Regardless. I guess we'll go find that. Um, in the meantime, let's chat with Gordon. Let's see if he's willing to talk to us now. Why are you still here? <laughs> Do us all a favor and find the cat so we can discuss the inheritance. Okay. Then find the cat we will. Um, where can we go? Is there anywhere else we can go? Anything else of interest in here? Chandelier? Chandelier? Look, there's a puzzle hidden here, Professor. What? There's a puzzle in the chandelier? Puzzle number 110? 110? What? Okay. On the table below are four cubes made up of matches. Can you change four cubes to three by moving a single match? Four cubes to three with a single match. Yeah, um, you definitely can. The question is, where do I want to put that match? Um, I think you'll move this one. You'll just rotate this one, really. Like that. Right? 
and do that. And then we've made we've made three of them. Yeah, I I like that answer. So we'll see how that works. Well, here's my guess. Nice. Legends Apprentice saves the day. Saves the day. <laughs> so funny. Brilliant, moving a single matchstick completely changes your perspective on the shape. Was it difficult thinking about things in 3D? It's pretty cool. I like that a lot of the puzzles test, you know, a variety of things from wordplay to math to spatial reasoning, etc. To logic. Piece of cake. Now let's go find more puzzles. Okay. So we've found that puzzle. Is there anything else? No, I didn't want to click on Gordon. I clicked on the doorway behind him. Alright, well... Regardless, um, we'll head back. It makes me wonder if there are any other more, any more, you know, puzzles hidden elsewhere. I've already checked this area quite a bit, right? Oh, I guess here's Claudia. Maybe this is Puzzle 8? We'll see, I guess, right? Professor, there she is. And off she goes. Drat, she ran off. We can't stop now, let's give chase, Luke. Alright, give chase we will. What? Cough, hack, hack, blast that burns, you're clearly evil. It looks like the engine blew out. So this is Saint Mystere, eh? The famed stomping ground of the late Baron Augustus Reinhold. I wonder what kind of tricks the old coot set up in this village before he shuffled off. Oh, Leighton, you ridiculous dandy. Just you wait. All the treasure you seek will be mine. <laughs> so clearly the villain here. Leighton's antagonist. I wonder why. What the relationship is, though. Well, interesting to note, I guess. Um, and really, there's nothing else going on up here? I guess... I guess not. Alright, well... Then I guess we'll keep going back. This guy's here again. What does he have to say? Is he gonna tell us where Claudia went, maybe? Oh, it's you, Mr. Please, call me Raymond. Or Ramon? Not sure. Oh, hoo hoo. Can I be of some assistance? As a matter of fact, yes, Ramon. Raymond? I wish I knew. <laughs> We're gonna go with Raymond. Lady Dahlia's cat slipped out of the house. Have you seen her about? Do you mean, dear Claudia? I think I saw her pass through here and run into town a few moments ago. If that's the case, I sure wish he'd bother to catch her before she ran away. Alright, well, then I guess we'll head into town, right? Not much more to do. We have this person again. Do you have anything to say? You need something? You do, don't you? Yep, I can see it in your face. An open book is what you are. Excuse me, but you didn't happen to see Lady Dahlia's cat come through here a moment ago, did you? Ah, uh, the fluffy white killer, yeah? I think she ran toward the town square. Yep, she went that away. I see, thank you. Okay. Think nothing of it, buddy. If only all questions were that easy to answer. <laughs> well then, I'll be off now. Who'd have thought he'd turn out to be such a nice guy? Shall we head for the town square, then? Indeed, let's be off. Hold on, let's take a look at what's behind the blue door. Blue door? Do you see it? That blue door over there appears to be open a crack. Care to take a look inside? Sure. Um, that sounds good to me. Ooh. Got a lot in here. Everything in here is caked in dust. The bread and cheese here do not look appetizing. Found a hint coin. The chairs. What's going on with the chairs? There's something I find very charming about this chair. Oh, that reminds me, Luke. Have you heard this one before? Puzzle time? Puzzle number 14? Wait, what happened to 13 and 12? Which chair? Okay. A new multi-purpose event hall has been built in the center of your town. It will be used for everything from concerts to sporting events to conventions. With the hall complete, it's time to order the chairs. Five chair designs level A through E are being considered. But of all designs, only one chair is completely suitable for the auditorium. Which chair is it? I mean... Hmm... Oh, you know what? 
I, I think I get what this is going to go for. So it'll be used for everything from concerts to sporting events to conventions. So the idea is we're going to need to set up all of the chairs in the hall. And then at some point, we're going to need to get rid of them. We're going to need to move them. Or rather, we're going to need to store them. And so... If you look at all of these, one of them stands out as more easily, I guess, stored than the others. And also, just from experience in these types of large halls where they set up chairs and everything, um, one of them looks significantly more similar than the others. Uh, so, I would say E, probably, um, just because you could stack that more easily. And, and again, I've seen that more frequently in auditoriums and such. And I can't imagine having to move around all of the other ones um, or store them when they're not in use for whatever event is in the hall. So, I'm... Yeah, I'll go with E. I can't see any reason to use the other ones over this one. I mean, unless you're going for something like comfort or mobility when, city, when seated. But I don't think the problem tells you about that. So, or tell, or like lets you know that that's a priority. It seems to be that it's variety of events, meaning the chairs need to be used and then also be stored. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with E. I think I've got it. All right. That's right, of all the designs, only E can be stacked upon itself. In a hall like the one described, each event requires a different number of seats, and thus a change in seating arrangement. The storability of E makes it the best chair for the job. Okay, so, I was under the impression it was going to be taking place on, like, the same floor that would be used for, like, a sporting event like basketball or whatever it may be, and so they would need to be completely cleared. Um, not just rearranged, per se, or a different number. Um, so, close, but... <laughs> Not exactly completely in level with what Leighton was thinking, but well done. I suppose this puzzle was too easy for you, my boy. You found a painting scrap. Oh, nice. So we got a painting scrap for that. That's surprising. Here's that no one is working the shop. Everything's caked in dust. This candle. Yep. Look here, my boy. This extinguished candle has reminded me of a simply wonderful puzzle. Okay. Fifteen. How many are left? Puzzles worth 10 picarettes. 10 candles stand burning in a dining room. A strong breeze blows in through an open window and extinguishes two of them. Checking back in on the candles later, you see that one more candle has gone out. To make sure no more flames go out, you shut the window. Assuming the wind doesn't extinguish any more candles, how many candles do you have left in the end? So the first thing that stands out to me is the difference between the use of the word candles and the word flames. So we're asked specifically how many candles are left in the end, not how many are lit in the end. And the second thing is, what's this time frame in the end? Meaning something has gone to exhaustion. Um, it's not like a, oh, how many are left after the window is closed? there's only one thing that would change how many or whether or not the flames go out right and it's whether or not they're used up completely whether or not the candle is completely used up so i think what we're supposed to do here is we start with 10 candles that have a flame and three of them are blown out so there are seven candles with a flame and then they're left to go until they completely burn out meaning the candles would melt away too so the only candles that'll be left in the end are the three that were extinguished by the wind before the window was closed. So let's let's give that a go. Okay. Yeah, I agree. How does this sound? All right. Professor, I've solved it. We solved it. That's correct. The seven candles that manage to stay lit will melt down completely. The only candles that remain in the end are the three that, yeah, we, we got that down. Excellent work, my boy. Sometimes it's important to consider the obvious, too. Delving too deep into the implied can cause misconceptions. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Very true. It appears that no one is working the workshop. Anything on the clock, maybe? Up here? No. Anywhere else in the room we can go? Doesn't seem so. All right. 
then I guess I guess we'll head out. I'm glad we got to see that though. That door doesn't look like it's going to open. What's going on there? A hint coin, okay. What about this sign here? No. So we're headed to the town square, right? So we must go to the left then here. <laughs> hey, you two, help me out here, would you? I'm in a real pickle. <laughs> okay. I love that phrase, it's so funny to be in a pickle. Well, what seems to be the problem, sir? Some knucklehead went and raised the bridge while I was on break. Then, as if it wasn't bad enough, that chowder head <laughs> made off with my only bridge crank. Oh dear, so you mean to say... <laughs> you got it, buddy. Until that thing shows up, no one is getting in or out of town. I'm still looking for that blasted crank, but I'm seeing too much red to get anything done. <laughs> what kind of punk pulls a prank like this, anyhow? Oh yeah. I found this doodad in the street when I was out looking for my crank. Got any, got any idea what it is? You found a strange gizmo. I love that word, a gizmo. What is that? I don't know exactly what that is. Gizmos? That's so great! The gizmos option has been added to the menu. Touch the trunk to open it and then tap the gizmos icon. From here, try to assemble the various mechanical parts you've gathered around town. The vanishing crank was added to your list of mysteries. So the vanishing crank, the noise, and we have Claudia there as well. Um, I would like to, in the meantime, check these barrels, maybe this clock? Oh! A puzzle? That clock tower is rather worse for the wear. Speaking of clocks, I've got just the puzzle for you. Admittedly, it concerns a more modern type of clock, but never mind that minor detail. Okay. Puzzle number five. Did we really not get puzzle number five? Did I just skip over that? That's really funny. This is worth 50 pick rats, so this is gonna be a toughie. Imagine a digital clock like the one shown below. How many times will the clock display three or more of the same number in a row over the course of one day? In case you were wondering, the clock in this puzzle displays time on a 12-hour scale, not on military time. Okay. So, realistically, I mean, it should be once per hour for most hours, right? Um, if we consider... Like, 12 a.m., Right, the very first hour. Um, will that count? Yeah, it should. They would use 12 a.m. instead of zero, right? So the very first hour um, is going to start with 12. So that would only count when there are two more digits to the right that are the exact same as the, you know, the single digit of the hours um, number. So 12, 22. And then there would be nothing else. Um, and then one in the morning, you would again have one eleven, and then two you would have two twenty two, three you would have three thirty three, four you would have four forty four, five you would have five fifty five, and then interestingly, in when you get to six, because the seconds can't go above sixty, you actually can't get three in a row, and that would be the same actually for seven eight and nine. Oh, and then when you get to 10 o'clock, you actually get three zeros in a row. So you get one for that. And then... Oh, interesting. Because because with 11, when you get into the 11 o'clock um, time, you actually start with two digits in a row, the one, right? So anything, that's, anything in the seconds that starts with one will count as three. So there will be 10 from 1110 through 1119 that will all count. Yeah, so so let's see here. 1222 is one, 111 is another, 222 is another, 333 is another, 444, 555, we're at six. Then 10 o'clock makes seven, and then there are 10 for the 11 o'clock range. So 17. And then that's only a.m., so we would have to double that for p.m. So it should be 34? I'm trying to think if there are any other exceptions. No, I don't think so. Let's give this a go. Yeah, I mean this is this is worth a lot of pickerats, so I hope 
I hope you get this right. Well, here's my guess. Nice. Professor, I've solved it. That we did indeed, and it, we now have 333 picarats. It's kind of, it's honestly kind of killing me inside that we missed five picarats from that misclick in the beginning, and then we missed two picarats. I'm just such a perfectionist that it's, it's kind of killing me, but... Okay, very good. A series of three or more of the same digit appears 34 times over the course of 24 hours. See the chart above for details. It's easy enough to spot times like 111 or 222, but many people forget about combinations like 10 o'clock or 11, 12. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see those being the trickier ones. Precisely the answer I was looking for, Luke. Well done, my boy. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So I'm glad, I'm glad we found that. Um, and now, is there, can we go in the clock tower? Can we go in that building? No, how about this blue door? Oh, we can. Who are you? Rodney. This is the town hall. What business do you have here? If you just moved to town, I strongly advise that you fill out a change of address form. Oh no, we aren't here for anything like that. Regardless, all town hall visitors must complete the proper forms. You can start with this one. Great. Is this a puzzle? Is this form going to be a puzzle? It is. Triangles and ink. Okay, 40 picarets. Oh, I, I'm, I'm a fan of math in general, so... Here are two shapes. One large and one small. Each is made up of little triangles. Dipping your fountain pen into the ink one time gives you just enough ink to draw four little triangles as depicted by the shape on the left. So with that in mind, how many times do you have to dip your pen in the ink in order to draw the shape on the right that's made up of 36 triangles? Interesting. Interesting. So. So I think the obvious thing to do is say, oh, 36 triangles and one dip draws four, so we would need nine, um, nine dips in order to draw all 36 triangles. However, there's considerable overlap between tri triangles when you draw them, right? If you draw one of the set of four small, one of the set of four little triangles as depicted by the one dip block, and then were to draw another one immediately adjacent to it, you would have two sides of little triangles that you, I guess, were saved um, in that, and you could draw extra elsewhere. And then that will add up over time. So it's definitely less than nine. The question is, how much less? It's probably going to be helpful to try and draw this out. So let's see here. Our first dip will do that. I should just use my touchpad, honestly. So that's our first dip. Now, we can draw most of, with our second dip, we can draw most of this. But again, we still have two little sides left over. So we could draw something like that. And now with our third dip, we can draw even more. Yet we still have another big side or two little sides, right? So we can do something like that. Now we can draw, what are we on? Fourth dip? Fourth dip, like this. Fill in the center. And then we have two little triangles, sides, or one, we could do one big one, I guess. Now with our fifth dip, I guess we can just do like this. Yeah, that's actually probably easier to keep track of. And then with our sixth one, well, we can do this, and then we have two big sides left over that we can do something like this. And then we have one more dip left, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine little triangle sides. And I believe that's exactly how many little side triangles we have in one dip. So in this case, we have one, yeah, this'll be our what? Seventh dip? Yeah. Yeah, so it's gotta be seven then. It's definitely not there nine, it's go. definitely less than that. Maybe there's a more efficient way, but nope, okay. Another puzzle solved. Awesome. Okay, yeah. So, oh, okay. So I guess you could consider it in terms of little triangles that you actually need to draw and then divide it accordingly. Shout out to the Triforce. <laughs> Nicely done. As you might have noticed, everyone in this town is simply crazy about puzzles. 
I strongly advise that you solve as many puzzles as you can. Oh, and while I'm at it, I strongly advise that you drop in on Granny Riddleton next door. She's a veritable treasure trove of puzzle-related informalia. Just beware that she's not always home. Interesting, we found a strange gizmo. Okay. So, that was, that was a cool puzzle. Is there anything else we can find while we're in here? Better not touch anything or that man will throw a fit. Okay. It's just forms and pens as far as the eye can see. Um, there's a bed. Is he living in the town hall? That's pretty funny. Anything up there? What a loon! <laughs> Framed forms. I guess, I mean, everybody's got their thing, right? We can go in here. Oh, no, that's out. So, next door is this house, right? Professor, have you noticed that this door is a different color than all the others in the area? And look at these vines. Have you seen vines growing on any other house in St. Mystere? This nameplate on the door says House of Puzzles. Exciting, indeed. I'm not quite sure what else lies behind the door, but it's clear there are puzzles hiding inside. Sadly, the door is shut tight, and there's no sense in waiting around for it to open. Let's return later. Okay, so we'll definitely have to check that out later. But anyways, it's already been quite a bit of time in this episode, so we'll continue the hunt for Claudia in the next episode. Obviously, Claudia is right in front of us. Um, we're going to continue to chase her down. We're going to continue to run into all these puzzles. It's crazy how the time flies as we're moving through all of these puzzles. They're so fun, and the characters are so... They have so much, I guess, personality to them. Um, despite the limitations of the DS, I love the animations. I love the music. It's so calming, so relaxing. It makes it so easy to focus. The, the character designs, like I said, are very intriguing, very reflective of their personalities. And... Um, yeah, this, this game has an incredible aesthetic, so I hope you guys are enjoying it just as much as I am. I hope it's not frustrating to watch me go through the puzzles, um, especially if slash when I get stumped. And and I hope uh, hearing my thought process is something interesting um, for those of you that, I guess, like watching these types of playthroughs or watching people solve puzzles. Uh, that's something I do with Sudoku, so I wouldn't be surprised if, as odd as it sounds, there are people out there who like it. So either way... That's enough uh, for now. I'll see you guys in the next episode. But until that next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.